welcome back to Mr. G's EV Hangout. So glad everybody's here. This is the place where we talk about the conversion from gas to electric. It's an amazing journey. The rising tide lifts all boats. In other words, we're all here to help each other uh, and to learn from each other. And tonight we got a, a whole round table of people, people that are converting their cars, people that are racing their cars, people that are breaking their cars, people are fixing their cars. We're doing all kinds of stuff. It's a lot of fun out here. So uh, just jumping right in, just so you know, we got our co-host Talik and we got our round table. Talik, how you doing? Hey, hey, Mr. G, let's, uh, let's see what we got tonight. All right, let's go straight into it. We're going to meet everybody as we go, but our guest tonight is Nick. And Nick, you're going to do your last name for me, so I don't mess it up. Hey, it's okay. Uh, again, four millionth caller, uh, Sapero. Nick Sapero. Nick, you're, what car are you converting and what what are you racing? What is happening here? So, uh, actually, it's kind of funny because how you asked ask that. The original car that we were converting was a Mercedes E350. And uh, we had the idea, my team had the idea that we would, uh, there's a guy in South Africa that does uh, Mercedes E-classes and turns them into like Sauber C8s and things like that. He's in Johannesburg. He's actually a friend of mine on Facebook. And I just, for some reason, I can't pull his name. But uh, that being said, uh, we thought we were going to do the same thing for lemons. And as I'm there with a Sawzall on our old Instagram account and cutting the roof off of it, that's when uh, Nick Pons got a hold of us and said, hey, 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 you need to call John and make sure, you know, Pragle to make sure that you can do that. And I'm like, sure, whatever, you know. And what we had not done is we had read zero rules. <laughs> and we did not know that you, can mod you couldn't modify the chassis. You couldn't modify, like, fenders and things like that. And you can't modify crash structures. So... What basically ended up happening is we had to toss that car because we had already cut the rules off uh, or the roof off. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so what happens basically is we were like, oh no. And we needed a four door car because we had an E350, a 2009 E350 or 2006, a 2006 E350 all wheel drive. And we had the Tesla drive unit, the LDU. Uh, from a, what we did not know, it was from a, actually a P100. Um, we had no idea because we found that out later too. So what happens is we then got on Facebook Marketplace and said, hey, can anyone give us a car that has four doors that's like sporty? And this guy replied from a place, uh, uh, if you remember, uh, Inglorious Bastards, Maynardville, Tennessee, uh, just north of it is another place called Taswell. I mean, they're just literally in the middle of nowhere. And this guy said, I have a RX-8. You can have it if you tow it. And I was like, that's where that first picture comes from. Because it that's actually from Gran Turismo, that picture. <laughs> uh, and it certainly didn't end up looking like that. Uh, it looked a little different. Um, but uh, it was a failed LS swap. So when you go through it, our... our you know, our EV.RX8 Instagram basically has all of the build and all the back and forth. Like there's the drive unit. And in fact, there's the Mercedes motor in the back left corner oh, that yeah. we had pulled. Yeah. So that was from the 350, the motor and the transmission from the 350. Um, and so we we're like, oh, okay, we have that. And then we had to build, we mounted that to a uh, Corvette uh, C5. Uh, uh, subframe yeah subframe i'm sorry and uh and mounted all that and made the so there's a whole corvette community that makes these uh weird little subframe additions so that you can put that subframe in like your hot rods or your you know your little ford tubs and stuff like that so we just basically copied that design kind of send cut send uh not not we didn't actually use send cut send but we copied that design and uh made oh that's funny that's kind of like now, when people say Hoover, that's vacuuming, but Hoover was a brand. And then yes. now you're saying, we just send, cut, send it, but you didn't actually use say, cut, send. We get the idea, you laser cut parts and you use the CAD to make something. That's really funny that you're using it like that. Well, it was angle grinder and it was CAD, but it was cardboard aided design. <laughs> that's the best kind. <laughs> yeah. So we did that. 
Uh, and yeah, there's the subframe, the uh, regular, and you'll see every once in a while, you can see these like conversions where they take these Corvette subframes and they mount it. There you go. And so that's one of the kinds that they have. Um, they, they, they do this a lot. The Corvette community, uh, one of our drivers, actually, his name is John Llewellyn. He does this to Corvettes all the time. He, he uh, mods them. He has a, like an IMSA series Corvette, like IMSA. And I mean, it is F-A-S-T fast. So I was just like, well, I know that Corvette's fast, so we can just model everything that he's got basically in the rear end of this thing because clearly the LDU does not fit in the back of an RX-8. If you if you look, it's there's just absolutely no way. You couldn't even get a uh, – I, I think you can get a Leaf motor in because I think there's a guy that's doing that. He's the other EV swapped – I don't think he's running yet, but he did it. And he modified the subframe a little bit and fit the the leaf motor in the back. But that LDU, there's no way. I mean, it's it's giant, you know. And so we uh, well, let me let me interrupt you for just a sec. Uh, we have some other people on the call that are at the Lemons as well, doing the EV, mm -hmm. and uh, that's Team Arc Blast. And have you met them yet? No, but I, I watched the podcast with them on it. Uh, the that Nissan truck is very, very intriguing because that was one of the ideas. We actually were thinking if if you've ever been to a Lemons event, and there's there's a couple around this, you know, Knoxville, you know, Road Atlanta and CMP both host, and there's nine teams here in Knoxville, Tennessee, in, including the Knox Vegas Low Ballers. And there are that kind of idea came. We thought about doing the uh, like a a small truck, like a like a seat, uh, you know, a uh, uh, Chevy, you know, C10. What, yeah, C10 or, uh, well, no, no, S10. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, S10. You're right. We'll, we'll talk about the revenge of the C10 uh, in, in a little bit when I talk <laughs> about the race itself. Um, but yeah, we, we thought about doing something like that. Uh, but we also saw that they had a like BMW, like 1998, there was a couple of them, their BMW 1998 uh, 3 Series. And they, they're the convertible kind. So they basically just made it into a truck, a pickup, like an El Camino. And there's like three of them that, at Road Atlanta when, when we went and looked at it uh, the first time we went to Road Atlanta to go watch Lemons races. So we were like, wow, that is, that's what, that, like that or a little truck like this, that's the way to go. Because you could trick this truck out, like suspension is a lot. Um, the, the height, uh, this is, they, I noticed that they were concerned about how high the battery is. I can tell you right now, that is a very, very big determining factor because also one of our other drivers and, and drum roll is Randy Popes. Um, and so you guys know who he is and he yeah. test drove our car and we had to end up put both the Mazda, uh, suspension, the, the shocks and springs, as well as the Corvette um c6 uh z06 leaf spring the transverse re leaf spring on it to have enough spring rate to keep the car from rolling and it still was like soft like a cadillac as randy said um well, you know i think we need to back up a second and yeah. just give people a little just a quick overview of like kind of why you guys are doing this and what is like the 24-hour lemons we got a big overview last time, but I think we just, just in case this is the first time someone's tuning in, this oh, is really yeah. a gasoline race, but they've got a category for electric. You want to just yeah, tell they, us about it? So how we found out is we were goofing off and we were thinking we were going to make go-karts at first. And then someone said, why not lemons? Because one of our uh, employees said, why not do lemons? Have you ever seen this? And I was like, what the hell is that? And then I looked at it and I was just immediately enamored. Uh, because you have you have three classes a b and c okay and c class is basically um float cars and when i say that i mean some are like that you know you'll have you'll have cars that look like you know uh they're dressed up oh, well actually like your bus that that bus that tom has over there was describing that will race in class c in fact class c is dominated by a toyota by toyota previa minivans and then, of course, you can see how they have like goofy little things like, look, there's an umbrella on the for the roof of that car. Uh, that's actually yeah, that's a that's an EV as well. But, you know, they will do this on purpose. This is not 
This is not a, you know, oh, you know, it's almost like a, um, if you know what a, not burning man, but like local burns, mm -hmm. like that kind of like little, you know, a bunch of people getting together just to hang out and like, you know, whatever and do their little thing. That is lemons in a nutshell. It's a very nice community of people that, I mean, there are probably some jerks, but we never met any. I mean, they were all super awesome people, like every so awesome. single person. And they don't, they're not there to win, but they're there to win. Some are there to win, win, win. Like, and that they get immediately casted in, in class A and then they get more scrutiny. Class A has more scrutiny because then they start looking at your parts and stuff like that. Class C is usually cars that are just not really going to finish or are just funny and hilarious. Class B are cars that look competitive, but that they, they've been doing this for a while. What, 2006 or 2004? They know what a competitive car actually is because to race for 24 hours, that endurance level really does absolutely destroy cars. Okay. <laughs> and, and that's why the best way to get into Lemons uh, and one of our, our members, uh, one of our folks that was racing with us, you know, one of my engineers, his dad was like, I'm doing this. Like, it's that infectious. He mm -hmm. literally bought the car by the end of our race. And, and wow. it's an accurate wow. integra that has been in 10 lemons races. And he's like, I'm buying that car. I'm racing it. That's it. And he's trying to get it together for the Sebring race. The wild thing is I spoke to Michael Bream from EV West about that episode. And he said that actually that's how he got started in racing. And I was like, wait, really? And he said, yeah, him and his buddies were racing and they figured out ways to win. It was very strategic. Uh, they weren't doing the electric yet, but then from there that inspired them to get the right people to get together and do the uh, Pikes Peak M3 that kind of kickstarted uh, EV West. So he said he owes his inspiration uh, from racing to, I'm not quoting him exactly, but that's kind of what he said. He's like, yeah, I got started with uh, lemons and I didn't realize I actually, when I heard about this stuff, I always thought it was like some sort of joke or whatever, but no, it's no joke. They take it serious. It is a large racing series across the whole world actually. Right. Yeah. They, well, they have uh, usually a lemons event has between 80 and 120 cars racing at the start. Now, mind you, after two hours, that has dwindled down to, you know, if you started with 100 cars, usually now you're down to about 60 cars because the first two hours, usually everyone blows up. Everyone that's going to blow up, blows up like real quick. Uh, and then the attrition starts really gobbling up. In our race, uh, we had what, 86 cars and we finished with 18, I think, if that gives you an idea of how rough yeah. it is. There is a reason why, like, this is for fun. You don't do this. You're not, uh, and and the Lemons crew, they're so wonderful. They they all tell you, you're not racing to be the next Mario Andretti. You're not doing this. You're not, you, you, this is not where this is. You're here to have a good time. Really do a bucket list thing. Like, I raced a car with other race car drivers. Okay? Yeah, that's now, cool. whether you know, whether or not you're that good or not, it, I mean, could be said or not, who cares? The point is you did it and yeah. you actually set your mind to it and decided to do it. And it's, it really was like so appealing. I, I became so enamored with this so fast uh, because it was just wonderful. I mean, it's, it's such a cool community and such a good group of people. If you want, if you want to try to make an electric car, compete in an endurance race this is the place uh and and the reason why is because they're also accepting of like they understand goofy stuff i mean yeah. literally there are like you know mardi gras float cars yeah. <laughs> i mean nice. it, it it happens uh but at the same time uh there are serious guys out there that have you know e36 bmws that are just mopping the floor they have mazda miatas that are just destroying um, there are other cars like that. Um, but it's funny because like I said, that war of attrition has to be a proven car. Uh, you can't go in there with your Chevy big block and, and I'm speaking with experience on this. Uh, you can't go in there with a 600 cubic inch, uh, <laughs> race car motor on a Chevy C10 and compete in lemons because, well, first you'll get penalty laps. 
uh, because every over ten dollars is is like a lap. But uh, then there's also the simple fact that uh, that thing ain't gonna last. That that's yeah. just it's not happening. You're not going 24 hours in that thing. Uh, yeah. And and I saw that there was a in our race the you know and yes it is fast but our car is blisteringly quick uh zero yeah, with, yeah with a full tesla motor in there that's awesome yeah it weighs it weighs just a little it weighs three thousand one hundred and twenty pounds if that gives you an idea oh my I mean, god yeah it's and like it half, has to, half the weight of what that motor was originally designed for yes it it will literally chirp the tires all the way through 70 miles an hour no problem like wow just it, you, we have we have done some hilarious things you know what we have is going on with this bumper oh okay so that is actually a really great question so <laughs> when we started doing this and we got the car for free um one things uh that my company does is we are and we're probably the greenest of the green we recycle wind turbine blades you know those big 150 oh, foot fiberglass blades we're the only ones in the world that can do it there's there's other companies that say they do it but they actually just burn the blades and that's, what's the that's, name of your company it's called carbon rivers and so we basically do a lot of really really high-end material science uh technology and that bumper that darth vader bumper was literally us just goofing off we shaped it up and we're like, well, we still want to have the license plate and we wanted to have a whole, we want to have about a foot off the back end of the car, just in case you get rear ended by a, another lemons car. We want a lot, of, a lot of safety. And so we do work in uh, a nanomaterial called graphene. Uh, in fact, uh, I yeah. make more of it than anybody on the planet. And that's, you know, a whole nother, you know, whatever. But uh, we also recycle the wind turbine blades. And so what happens is we grind them up. And then we do our, our multi-stage process. And then out, out the end of the process comes the almost virgin fiber. It, it, you know, you can make unidirectional mats. And if you know what a unidirectional mat is, it's exactly what a Corvette body panel is made out of, or a boat is made out of, or any fiber glass. The only ones that are not uni, I mean, not unidirectional, I'm sorry, uh, non-woven mats. And then there's unidirectional and, and woven, which are, you know, woven is, you've seen it before, you know, the woven, almost like a cloth or, or carbon fiber is usually a woven mat or a uni mat. So we basically make these non, non-woven mats that are just like the, you know, what goes into a boat or Corvette or something like that. We actually do recycle. I mean, we, I have 400 Corvettes worth of recycled stuff. Like if you know that tornado that came through, all those panels, all those body panels came to us. And we've recycled. Wow. Yeah, we we do this and uh, we do it for multiple automotive OEMs. So they are really they actually have this mentality of like, hey, we need to, you know, do green technology for real. Uh, the irony is that the wind turbine industry is not as much that. But, you know, whatever, because uh, they think they're already doing the full mile by just creating these wind turbines. But uh, we we take them, we recycle it out and completely bring it down all the way down to where you have two products, a biodiesel, technically, and a uh, glass uh, fiber. And so you take that glass fiber, you make it back into a mat, and then you make that wicked Darth Vader bumper. And that we have hit with a sledgehammer many, many, many times. We've kicked it like Liu Kang from Mortal Kombat trying to see if we could even crack it or anything. It's only about uh, one millimeter thick of glass. Bang. And, and it is, you cannot do anything to it. It's foam filled. That probably helps a lot, but it's, yeah. it's no joke. It is, it is, it is very, very strong. Was, this is amazing. I never thought I would get this story about the wind turbine recycling just from looking oh. at this photo. Oh, yeah. it, it is something. The car, Tom, what do you think of this, man? Dude, I I tuned in just as a kind of a whim. I did, you know, because I was gonna bypass this. I usually go to my Tuesday night VW meet, but this is so up my alley. How many more blades can you handle? Uh, I mean, how much are you geared up for? We are right now in the process. We have a one ton per day process line that currently runs. Now, to give you an idea, that's enough to do all of Boeing's carbon fiber. Because also, if you see our wing and our diffuser, 
our wing is Pagani carbon fiber and our diffuser is Boeing carbon fiber. Um, that being said, going back, uh, yeah, cause he'll find it. Um, there's the, the, that diffuser is made out of Boeing, like crashed 737s. <laughs> no, I, that's, that's a joke. It's, it's their uh, industrial scrap waste, but, um, you know, the, and that thing, you can stomp on it. You can crash it. I actually did one time because the utility company near our industrial park cut a trench in the road and did not label it. And I literally dove the car into that, <laughs> and it it the whole weight of the car was on that that's that front splitter, and it still didn't break it. Wow! Yeah, it, this it, is it, amazing. It, yeah, I never expected no this part of the podcast. This is such a cool diversion, man. Wow. Okay, yeah, I, gotta ask, I gotta ask a real tough question here. So, what are you really making the bumper out of? Because we all know that those blades can't be recycled; they got to be buried and sit there. So, what are you really making those bumpers out of? <laughs> no, that's it. That, I mean, that's the thing is we we are we have uh, I think we have currently on our our site we have a four hundred and five acre former DOE site that serves the uh, Manhattan Project. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. But like yeah. literally the atomic bomb was made next door to us. Uh, all that uranium and uranium er enrichment. Um, so we actually own the old power, the coal power plant site. Uh, they tore that all down, remediated the site. And now we land blades there and then we chop them up and then process them uh, through through and through. Uh, and, you know, it's it's something that, you know, when you have. It's huge. I mean, it is. We have what uh, some number like twenty thousand tons of blade material. So, wow. yeah, awesome. we're in the That's middle awesome. of an upscale process to make a two hundred ton per day plant. Which the biodiesel side on that is forty eight forty eight thousand gallons per day. I mean, that's the kind of numbers that we're dealing with. Amazing. It's, yeah, it's it's. Well, I think you need a separate podcast for this. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah you you could. Yeah, it, yeah. It, you know, I also do a podcast about shop teachers, and this would be great information because we want to give the students the the latest recycling information. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for the shop it. shop class podcast. That's another one we do. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's get back to the car. Uh, yeah. So yeah, man. So okay. So tell us more about the build. So the so we we went through we made lots of mistakes lots of lots of many mistakes when you're building a car uh, you know we uh, you know we had to work on the subframe there that's that's part of that um, cardboard aided design uh, that that picture right there uh, <laughs> that was our first visit uh, at Lemons where it literally is that every endurance racing team has a crew of guys who and then one guy that's me does 99 percent of the work says he's going to help but he's not disappear at the very beginning and doesn't <laughs> i mean this is this is realistic um not not so bad but uh there's our brakes for our porsche calipers um i had i had uh we originally used these batteries these are the bmw i3 batteries um and we were using those but they just did not have enough umph and when i say that they they handled the their their uh the What's it called? The polycrystalline or whatnot cells, prismatic cells. They're the Samsung prismatic cells, but they'll hold the, they have, you know, you can stomp on the gas and get going, but the actual kilowatt hours of those are only like, I believe they're 24 kilowatts mm -hmm. at 400 volts, you know, and actually they're 396 volts or something like that. Cause they're actually 48 volt modules themselves, uh, 48 point something. So originally we had that tray right there and the batteries would stack in, in that tray, bam, 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 bam. And ironically enough, it's 48 inches long. It's a tray, 40, actually 49 and a half or something like that. And that's behind the back seat where the trays, the batteries would just slide in like that too. And that's, that's actually the beginning of the roll cage and fitting of all that. And um, we did all this over and over and over again. And then when I, we did some testing and the batteries just, there was no way like you you would get about 15 minutes on the track uh mm -hmm. with those batteries okay because it just uh, first off they'll the so you'll have an initial voltage of like 400 volts we'll just say okay 
But yeah. then when you get down to um, with those batteries at 292 volts, I believe it was, then nothing. That's it. No acceleration. The car just catastrophically just shuts down, like done. Mm -hmm. No, no more movement. And so we were having issues with that, trying to plan out because, you know, it's that and then trying to charge them and this and that. And they were expensive, too. They were like six grand per module. Wow. And to get the bigger one, the 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 uh, 48 kilowatt one or something like that or 50. No. Yeah, it's 48, I think. Um, they were like twelve thousand dollars to get our hands on, even on eBay. Like what year? What year were you starting this with the, those prices? Uh, that was about a year and a half ago. Oh wow! Still wow, crazy. Yeah, I was like, wow, okay. So yeah, there's that's actually the LDU out of my Tesla. I have a Model S myself, and I had to take that out and then redo the uh, the shaft seal, which that is foreshadowing. I'll say that. Do you know what the you know the shaft seal on the a large drive unit it's made out of ptfe so teflon and that is what holds all the coolant from going around the main seal and flooding the uh stator unit and then making its way over to a uh, worst case scenario to the inverter uh through the yeah. uh, three wires through the potting of the three wires so i had to replace that because i drove down to florida and then on my way back zoink, <laughs> you know and I was about this, to say, is, uh, this is Johnny doing a doing a, a seal fix on the same issue. There's a several uh, companies that have figured out solutions for it. Uh, yeah. uh, Eddie from Revolt, Johnny Five, uh, Amp Revolt in, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. There's a lot of people that had to deal with this. So yeah, I know we know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it myself. It'd be great to see it. And uh, also QC, Q, QC Charge up in uh, Portland and also in a I think in San Diego area. Yeah. Yeah. Sam. Yeah. Actually, I think I got some information from that literal video right there <laughs> to do it right, um, nice. because uh, it was that one and then another guy who had a Toyota uh, Rav Four that has that drive unit. It just has a different inverter, so that's why you know Toyota, uh, Mercedes, and Tesla all use that that stator and rotor housing and gearbox, uh, but they they had different inverters, so. That being said, we we did all that and we were trying to do tests and we drove it to like different um, car meets and stuff like that and you know cars and coffee. And there, uh, there's the yeah, replacement. Yeah, there it is. Right? Yeah. That that neat. That. Yeah, that thing's badass. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. The cooling delete manifold. Yeah, that is a very very interesting thing because I I would consider putting that on my personal Tesla. But I may put the uh, the P unit on in, in mine because mine's not a P unit. Mine's a 2013, so it's not. It's technically it's weird. It's it's the Elon Musk signature edition from 2013. Oh, so it wow. just has like a little more trim and it has a little bit more power. Not as much as like a P unit, but it does have a little bit more oomph. So you know, it, it's a little better acceleration. So cool. when, when you were doing the i3 batteries, um, w w what was your strategy for getting around the track for 24 hours? How many how many uh, swappable, um, uh, like, full packs were you going to do, or assuming that was your technique? And then... Oh, yeah. So we were going to swap the packs, but when we found out, literally, we, we were doing math, yeah. and I'm like, this is not going to add up. You, you've got a certain number of kilowatts coming out of, into that motor, this battery has this many kilowatts in it. There's the units right there. And you can see those the inside the battery is the cooling units. So we use those cooling unit, those manifolds. Uh, and actually there it is. The cool, it's, it's off of the AC compressor. So, and so the Porsche Taycan, the Audi e-tron and the BMW i3 all use this kind of system where they just basically induction plate and cool the batteries that way. So we did, we, I just, rip that whole battery system out and you know configured it and we were getting it to work but it just was not enough battery power because if you went for a you know if you know lemons it's like uh if if it's not the true 24-hour race at uh, uh high plains um you know like it's it's technically what uh eight hour no 10 hours and 10 hours so you're gonna have to swap batteries but if if you're swapping batteries every 15 minutes there's it's just not happening it's you, i mean 
how many modules and how fast are you going to charge it? And that goes into cool. the next thing, which is yeah, a endurance car that's going to be racing in lemons is three components, period. Okay. It is the car. Okay. And everybody goes, Oh, I know how to build a car. Well, you might know how to build a car. Fantastic. But then it's B, the batteries. If you do not have the proper batteries and you don't have that kilowatt, I don't care. It's just not going to happen. It, it, I mean, you'll be swapping batteries more than, and you can do it fast. We actually got down to where we could get the batteries swapped in because uh, we ended up going to Tesla Model 3 batteries and modifying them. So then we had 52 kilowatts, no battery sag, no nothing. We were murdering. Uh, at that point, I could drive it, you know, hundreds of miles regular and then come back. So that that was kind of neat, even though, you know, the LDU is not as efficient as like the Model 3 unit. So you're not getting the full like 220 miles that you could get out of it. You get like 160, 180 miles. Um, but the car weighed so little, you absolutely got there. I mean, you were, you're, there, there's the original um, and that was an interesting car and, you know, that, that's some other stuff that we were doing, you know, at the army air, the air brigade thing. Oh, I'm just trying to get to, Oh, here we go. Yeah, there they are. So we started pulling those and modifying them, uh, because they have the BMS card built on them too. So Wait, you can what, actually, what model is this from the model three? That's, oh, a, standard, no, that's a standard range pack, right? The original yep. standard range. Yep, that's the original standard range. There's actually a whole serial number that you have to follow or you'll get the longer ones because we had to have 48-inch modules. Well, guess what? Those are literally 48 inches long. They fit right into the old system that we had before for the batteries. We changed the, the one that's under the hood and, the, and in the back seat uh, for the RX-8 because you know it has a suicide door, so you just slide them out. And we changed that up. Uh, so that we could get a little bit more, you know, room and stuff like that. And so if you look, that's the bottom of the batteries. And then I put a uh, graphene infused um, uh, polyurea, which is kind of like a um, Rhino liner or, or uh, Linex. Uh, I have a pourable, I have a connection with a, a company in Atlanta that actually makes it where you can actually mix it in there and then pour it and then spread it like, like kind of like epoxy. And then it'll harden up in about eight minutes and you can't do it. I mean, it is, they use it, they use it in Israel for like bomb shelters, like concussive <laughs> wave prevention. So I was like, yeah, can I use that? And so he sent me a bunch of it and I absolutely used the hell out of it. And so there, there we have that V battery V instead of a V8, we have a battery V. Uh, this 200 is a cool volts. idea. Yeah. Let, let me just, let me just uh, uh, st uh, interrupt you for a sec. Tyler from uh, Arc Blast does a uh, – they're doing a battery swap situation, and they've designed this whole thing. I want to get their uh, Tyler's thoughts on your uh, battery configuration. Tyler, what do you think? Yeah, I actually like it. Uh, I'm kind of surprised Lemons let you run with just that. Like, they were pretty worried about, like, penetration protection ours. We have a tank of a battery right now. Oh, so yeah. definitely taking notes. <laughs> yeah, our, well, I, I – so some of the rules that Lemons has was written by me. I literally talked to them and talked to John and made sure that, you know, BMS and protection and stuff like that. That's why they have the, uh, they're using some of the Pike Peaks rules uh, where the eight inches from, from the side of the door, or, you know, from the outside profile of the yeah, vehicle. Yeah, so the envelope. Down. Um, and, and ours were buried deep within the subframe. Um, the actual batteries were literally about, from the front bumper, the at the end of the bu bumper, it was about uh, 26 inches from the front of the car. So they were buried deep in there. And that is a big, thick quarter inch aluminum plate that they sit on. And it's armored underneath. Uh, and it's also triple insulated. So th this is one of the keys too, is you want to have that battery no matter what. If you touch one of those, the one of something on the battery to one side, it cannot loop and interfere into the car. You cannot ground it to the car. You cannot do anything naughty with it. And also that module system is designed on a slide rack. Uh, so if we did have an impact, the that aluminum will take it and push it into the trans tunnel. So we were, we were, 
I, I was I told John, I said, I'm not dying in a goddamn lithium ion fire. And <laughs> he had a little laugh. I feel that. <laughs> I, I was not about I'm I'm not playing around about the safety of these things because you like you guys have a, a tank there. It's beautiful because I mean good yeah, luck. I mean we we just wanted to pass tech, like we can take weight out later. So I'm glad to see someone's able to pass tech with a little bit less tanky of a setup. So, <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, it's it, what we used is a lot of the subframe and, all, and a lot of it. I mean, it is quarter inch aluminum. It's not playing around. You, you, you put it in there and then it locks in. It's all designed to lock in and lock together because we modified the batteries. They're not, they're not the same yeah. battery. I guess uh, for comparison, we have court, our first battery pack had half inch steel plate in the bottom. So, oh yeah. That'll totally do it. <laughs> Yeah, that, but that'll be heavy. That's that's the only problem. Yep. Yeah. So, and I I told them what I was doing, and I had sent them. You know, I made sure we corresponded because that's a big thing. They don't want somebody to come in there with some jank stuff. Why would you want that? You 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 can't have janky stuff going on um, because uh, I mean, it, it's it's just a fact. You know, already the Lemons cars, like I said, a lot of them blow up in the first two hours of the race so yep. you don't you know yeah there you go <laughs> so you so, don't want to have so a situation what? where you know yeah guys it's 400 volts okay at yeah. 1200 amps that will kill you it's not playing around so you have to take okay. that very seriously um let me ask you a question about the uh nick about do you so I maybe I misunderstood. Do you swap it out and how does it come out if that's the case? Okay, so they slide out. Uh, so in that picture, you can see where it just literally it's it's angled like this, and the batteries literally go in, you know, they go in kind of like this, like a V, oh, wow. and they slide in, boom, boom, and there's our little uh, motorcycle battery, and that's yeah. that's part of it. I literally had to you can see that I was using a test lug on the far left on the bottom of that picture uh, that is also that that black material on the end is uh treated kevlar it's waterproof kevlar so you can take a i mean you can take a gun and shoot that and it won't go through wow so that's part of what we were doing we made sure that impact and everything like that there's the other slide that's the new slides the vertical integrated slide where so we so you have a you have two areas you slide out the front and out the side yep yeah that's that's how we did it we split the packs oh. up ran them in series and then they plug in and uh we were using we we did the mistake of originally we we're using those bmw i3 uh connectors again right so that was about 650 dollars worth of bmw i3 connectors that i ordered from the bmw dealership uh, <laughs> and uh randy when we test drove it at amp he literally we put too much amperage through it because those are actually aluminum connectors they're not uh they're they're one gauge which is fine okay but they're aluminum not copper so right. they they basically superheated and literally stripped the insulator like just blew it out like melted it like it was nothing and of course, because we had it so insulated, you know, the, the connectors are so insulated and so set and all that, it wasn't a big deal. But I was like, yeah, I'm still not going to. Sorry, Randy, you can only do a couple laps. Uh, you know, we're done for the day. And he's like, well, you know, you did all this and that. And I'm like, no, nope, no, look, look at the wire. And he goes, oh, and I was like, yeah, well, we're going to have to replace that with with copper uh, three yacht wire. And so we decided to go with copper three yacht coming from the model three, even though the Tesla factory wire is one yacht going all the way down the car from, you know, battery to motor and all that stuff. But we decided, well, why take any risk and let's go ahead and upgrade, upgrade the, uh, the, you know, the wiring so that, and the connectors so that they are, uh, you know, 500 amp connectors each. So, you know, you got a thousand amps. Um, Daddy. yes, son. Oh. <laughs> so um how many how many total packs are you using in the swap process do you have two packs do you have three packs four we have okay. four 52 kilowatt battery packs um and we swap those they're all modified they have they also underneath that um that uh polyurea on top of that is also another aluminum plate you didn't really see it but in they were showing the video where they were doing the swap 
Uh, and that is, we armored the batteries themselves too. So that was a big thing to make sure that, uh, yeah, yeah, a feral kid, um, that, to make sure that they, there they are, that's in final form right there. They Whoa. could not get anything. And so even, even how they're all mounted, they're on uh, Lexan, so polycarbonate, so that they, it doesn't shatter. Uh, they're all on polycarbonate, like there's an insulator. So you bolt one way, and then you bolt the other, and then you bolt the one way, and then you actually have a through bolt system with a, a grommet so that that can't be uh, grounded out. And that's what goes into the subframe of the car. So basically what happens is if you get in a crash, that doesn't land in the driver's lap. Wow. So that's, I mean, we did a lot of things to make sure that that would do exactly what it does. And you can see the AC condenser system on the right uh, to keep the batteries cool. And we were originally not going to use the water system that the Tesla Model 3 has. You can see the two little plugs uh, on the top of the V. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the battery plugs. But over there on the top, they look like little round buttons. Uh, go go down a little bit with your cursor. No, down, down. That's them. Yeah, yeah, right there. That's the water cooling that goes into the Model 3. And you pull so, it from the bottom. It's like a cooling plate. They, yeah, they, they at the time, we were just using the AC condenser just like the Audi and the uh, Porsche and the BMW, just to cool them through that. So and, and it's like a cooling plate? Like you're not going in between the batteries? No, but what we decided to do is say, well, screw it. Let's add the water anyway, because we have the water pump running and it's cooling the motor and maybe it'll you know keep everything going. So we did that as well. So we had two phases of cooling because- wow from the original E350 Mercedes is our radiator that's literally like this underneath from the front bumper. You can't even see it, uh, but it's it's underneath all of that. Now, this is when we first were trying to hack uh, chargers. Uh, yeah, so that was my next question is, so when you're, they're out of the vehicle at the track, what's your charging setup for charging the packs? Um, so now that is where I'm going to be a little bit secretive because after we did the race, um, the U.S. government started throwing money at us. Uh, <laughs> um, so they needed, uh, we were running a 75 kilowatt uh, generator to a Tesla supercharger system. Uh, we were delivering um, 160 kilowatts. Uh, was our maximum capability, but the generator could only do 75. So we had a lot of room and a lot of overhead. And we were charging off of split phase 240 uh, into the system. So that's an onboard charger. We were we were fooling with those. Um, but we were kind of, we did a pseudo mix of onboard chargers and our own cards and our, our own proprietary technology that we were developing. And we just did it just to goof around we're not electrical engineers even though we kind of hobby it um but then who knew i mean like after the race it was like you guys are geniuses uh you need to patent this and you need to i mean we already filed and everything i mean wow. it's, it's going full so if the funding comes through that's what the sequel to this run will be is we will probably try to do it again um is that the video that uh, Randy was walking around with? With uh, yes. Like, oh, is it on? Oh, you're not wearing gloves or whatever. Is that yeah, the yeah. video? Yeah, because it, everything on that was also triple lifted and stuff like that. We made sure that everything was. There's the batteries that, and you can see that white aluminum is casing the batteries, and then there is part of the supercharger mechanism, and there's some of the onboard chargers, and then some of our own stuff going on there, and there's John Llewellyn right there, uh, and we had the little carts for the batteries. And there's uh, one of our engineers, May, uh, talking to Nick. I believe that's Nick, or is it Randy? Hey, it's one of the Randy. two. Uh, yeah. So yeah, she uh, she was working on it to make sure that we did what we had to do, and we were able to. We were maxing out that generator, no problem. I mean that, and we were able to charge those batteries in about uh, forty minutes. So, so I yeah. I got, wait, I, before you go ahead, I just want to go back for a second here. Just for some clarification, uh, I'm just amazed at what you're doing. Uh, but I just want to ask you two questions. So, how when you comes over here, how do you pull out this? This actually gets slid out. Is that what you do? 
it, it actually comes straight out. See, there's the Kevlar on the bottom, right? Over yeah. the metal plate. And then we also put, later on, we put uh, that Kevlar, and then we put another material called ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene. And ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene is more abrasive resistant than stainless steel. So we put that on there, and it's also a ground effect, uh, you know, so it, it keeps it, you know, no conductivity. And it just, and it's self-lubricating, so it just slides, and when we, when we so lift those up. you slide it out. You, you don't have a chair. You you by hand, yeah, and then that goes on your carrier. Yeah, they okay. weigh eighty five pounds each. It's it's not they're not that heavy. So okay, we, I got yeah, it. And, and you use the uh, it's not there, but the crossbar, the the strut bar is there, and that's actually where you stick your arm right underneath it. Uh, it's later. It, the strut bar will be on there later. Oh, you have like a strap to hold on to. Yeah, yeah, and it's just strap, and you just pull it up and slide it right out. I'm sorry, Nick. I'm so layman's. I'm just like, uh, how do how do you actually get it out of there? You know, like oh wow. yeah, no. It, it, and like I said, it's angled, so you only have to lift it like three to four inches on the front. All right. Kind of lift it up and slide, it, and then boom, it all comes right out. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you know, but Team Arc Blast, their their whole back end is tipping, and then there's a whole thing sliding out on rollers. That goes to a proprietary cart. It gets That's charged. Incredibly smart. Uh, I, I can't. I can't. I, I saw that on the podcast, and I was like, "That is exactly what you'd want to do if you had a pickup truck." I will say, our battery pack weighs five hundred pounds, though. So, like, while we only have to do one pack, you guys have us on weight. Like, it's this is actually be pretty interesting. Mm. Yeah, it's it's. They're only eighty five pounds each. Those those Tesla modules. So they're it's we made sure that it was easy peasy to get out. Um, awesome. Okay. And, thank you for asking. You know, I was like, Oh, how do you lift it? Like I just came in with the layman's question, you know? No, but no, I'm, no. It's totally, totally, totally fine. Uh, because I mean, you're, you're trying to imagine how, how yeah. this craziness happened. Uh, because I mean, this was all, we were just, we were on the fly most of the time. And then we started getting in there, our groove later on. Um, we had the car ready for, uh, road Atlanta, uh, last year, uh, December of last year, we had it ready. And then we, there were some things going on and stuff like that. And we were just like, okay, you know what we'll do? We'll postpone and go to NOLA. And so it actually helped us a little bit because we, that's also when we got a little bit more testing in and a little bit more, you know, getting used to the car, uh, that RX eight has, it, it's on Corvette wheels all the way around. So it's giant Yokohama. Thank you so much, Yokohama. I can say that again and again and again. Uh, Randy provided that that uh, that link to them and they were just so nice. Um, those tires grip like grim death. Uh, when we were awesome. At, yeah, we, it, it the, uh, like I said, we actually, after, now in the pilot sports, the Michelin pilot sports, we can catch a wheel at 70 miles an hour. On the Yokohama's, they were so sticky that you can catch a wheel all the way up to about 30 and that's it. So that's the difference. I, I can, I can attest that the Yokohamas are better than Michelin pilot sports when you're talking about grip. Awesome. So um, that video with uh, Randy was actually the first time I kind of saw your platform and it was really soon after we did the episode with arc blast, but I'm, I'm curious. And I think Ron is too. How did you guys get connected with Randy? Oh, uh, I'll tell you what. He is the nicest dude on the planet. For sure. Yeah. If you just say hi and say, hey, do you want to drive my car? Guess what will happen? He'll drive your car. He <laughs> <laughs> rules. We, uh, we got a hold of him, and now now he's a friend of mine. Like, it's it's amazing. We uh, He's ready to go to the next one that we do if we do one. Um, he taught us how to drive. That was another thing. I mean, dude, you could not – the, the man is amazing. He 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 is just ass whooper two thousand. I, I I mean he's a very nice dude. That's all there is to it. He's um, also pretty funny. He was on the uh, Rich Camisa uh, Cybertruck video where they tried to hit the fridge, um, and he he also drove the gar go kart behind the Cybertruck. But also he's you know he's one of the 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 drivers for Pikes Peak for Unplugged Performance, and so he he knows uh, my friend Craig who is, does a lot of driving for. Uh, unplugged as well so it's, it's kind of this small world of like wait you, you know randy i mean i haven't met him yet but it's it's just awesome that he's he's in on your project oh yeah he he was there it was around well it was, it was before december so we had him on on the hook 
and like a secret weapon way, way, way back in like maybe June or July of last year. Yeah, June or July. And he was like, yeah, I'll do it. Let's do it. I was like, yes, sir. And then uh, and then when we had to cancel out, he was like, oh, we're not going to do Road to Atlanta. I was like, no. And he's like, well, I'll be there. And so we hung out and, uh, you know, it, that's when he uh, crashed the uh, the Ghostbusters car. And I, I was actually the one tr that he was crashed the Ghostbusters car. Yeah, yeah, it was a Subaru Legacy oh. wagon, and um, he didn't crash it. Someone crashed into him. He was he was running like the the hottest laps uh, oh. of of the race, and and brought them all the way up into like third or fourth place. Like was whipping ass, and then this uh, Crown Vic that had like a crash bar on the front and the back and the side doors. Like it looked like a Mad Max machine, right? And they they wrecked at least eight cars at road Atlanta. They wrecked them like just crashed into, and they just kept going because they had a roll cage on the outside. Basically it was, wow. it was, it was very, very, very bad news for everyone. Um, <laughs> so when, uh, when he, when he smashed the uh, ghostbusters car, I was out there trying to help him and, and their team get, get the, uh, the, the front end pulled out, but I'm, I'm not there to, I'll say this. I knew I could do it and I could get it done, but I wasn't going to take command of how to repair their car. Cause they were like, no, we're going to try this. And I was like, all right, no, you, you do you, man. I'm, I'm not here to make you, you can't, you, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's one of those yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's how I have that connection with junkyards is because when I was like 18, I worked for a guy that did rebuild and repair of cars and had car lots and, and then another guy and, I just knew that community. So I, and I've always wanted to build a race car for a very, very, very long time. So getting this, you know, I, to do so I gotta was, say the junkyard is underrated. Yeah. I, I, I you know, and it's, I appreciate you saying that because I want to share a story, you know, growing up, I didn't have shop class, which is ironic because I'm a shop teacher. And um, what I used to do is go to the junkyard in Hackensack, New Jersey, which is gone now, the EPA like wiped it off the map. Uh, but anyway, and I, I learned a lot from those junkyards. I would I would take the parts and I would try and put them together. And I got I bought a car from them. Reluctantly, they sold it to me. I fixed a Yugo one time. That was pretty cool. Yeah, dude, I, I bought a Yugo for 200 bucks. And actually, I was going to take it racing because you can modify them. And they're actually really a Fiat um, uh, 128 or 127 or oh, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the X19 platform engine fits in there. And Anyway, junkyards underrated, very cool spots Super to learn about engineering. And and if you make friends with them, uh, one of the junkyard rules, and you know this, is when you go in there, you take the parts off like you are putting them back on. So don't just go in there with a screwdriver and break everything off to get your little thing. Take everything out. Pop. Take all the screws out because you know what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to take those car those screws out in your car. So you might as well learn where they all are and go. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's how you get to that. Because then if you do break it at the junkyard, it's at least that little plastic thing. You're like, oh, if I had done it like this, okay, cool. And then when you go do your car, you get it right. Okay. Yeah. So that is that junkyard etiquette. I've seen so many people that just go in there with a damn tools in a bucket and go in there and just rip everything out with a crowbar. I saw a guy, literally, he was trying to redo his Kia's. So this is what he gets. He had a Kia. And he was trying to redo the door handle and he was trying to pry the door handle off the new car with a crowbar. Uh, I'm like, Dude, that's not uh, how it's done. You literally take the inside panel off and you get in there, take it all apart so that, oh, what are you going to do? How, are you going to do that to your car? Ruin the door that way too? I mean, you sound like a shop teacher. You're like, whoa, do it the right way. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm all about that. I, I have a team of engineers that are very, very, very brilliant that I work with and, uh, you know, are they work underneath me. And it's, it's a lot of that, a lot. I like to educate people and like to, like to get people like the tips and tricks, you know, cause my dad was a carpenter. So there you go. That's, that's where that there comes in too. Uh, you know, so you, you get this like sense of like, well, you know what I need to do is I need to like, instead of being a jerk about it, just teach them certain etiquette and certain things and they'll, they'll follow these protocols and it will serve them so much better, you know? But that's that's me in in a nutshell, right there. You know, I I try to actually. There's the old BMW tray in the back of that too. There's oh, me doing. Yeah. yeah, there's there there's more crimping. 
Uh. Okay, so so moving along. So now, what's the next step of the build uh, once you got the battery sorted out? Oh yeah. So then we started getting it going, and the charger. Like I said, it's three things: car, charger, <laughs> and battery. I love so that then, comment. That nice Camry there. I'm like, that's the comments on Instagram. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that Camry's for sale. So whoever wants it, they can have it. Um, <laughs> it sits at the side of our shop because it's one of our one of, one of my business partners. His uh, his wife's old car. Uh, oh yeah. Oh my God, this. What, what so are we, we looking at here, Nick? What is this? So I will Oops, tell sorry. you, you have to be patient with electrics. Oh yeah. Uh, and figure out what gauge actually absolutely works <laughs> for the plugs that come with your electrics. Um, mm. So that is from that's the hub the 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 plug matrix for the EV controls module that actually controls the LDU. So oh. we I just bought that you know twenty nine hundred dollars um, and then had to make that work and then plug it all in and so there was a point where like those wires were kind of weird and janky and sometimes they would like not connect well so i was like all right that's it and i took it all apart and redid the whole thing and soldered all the pins properly and did did a good job the second time the job that i didn't do the first so, time so this is this is our our wiring diagram for the bus build that we did last summer where did you have a final wiring diagram is that on a whiteboard somewhere <laughs> uh we have pages we have uh so also the rx8 because it was a failed ls swap um someone had decided to try to do the electronics and literally blew all of the uh, the wiring harness mm. all of it was gone like nothing was worth so i had to redo it all like I went to a junkyard and got an entire loom out of another RX-8. And of course, you know, they gave it to me because they don't care. And, and I put it back in the car. And there, there's when it was portly, uh, 3259, I believe, was the weight. Mm. Oh, this is uh, setting it up. Yeah. Yeah, there's so the I tires. Don't to, I don't mean to skip around. So, yeah. So then uh, you the next thing is you actually had to put the entire wiring harness back. Yeah, yeah, I had to redo the entire wiring harness. So yeah, I have pages and pages and pages of what wire goes where. And what are um, we looking at here? Is this the charger? This is one of the the onboard uh, Tesla charger units uh, that we were using uh, initially to make supercharging work. And so wow. that's a Gen three unit right there. It has three modules in it, and they it delivers seventy two amps. Uh, that's why if you go to the supercharger, oh, wait, did with I the, miss something? So you're not, you're not level two, you're you're level three. Yeah, we are. We are delivering 160. Or we have the possibility with our charge unit, 160 kilowatts. Wow! And you still need to swap batteries. Well, yeah, they the batteries only last. They're only 52 kilowatts, so they last about an hour on the track. Whoa! Yeah, so, we dial it back. We dialed it back to uh, instead of 550 kilowatts on the LDU, we were actually running 275 kilowatts, and and we'll get into what what that resulted. Um, so I bet you we, Tyler wants a piece of the supercharging action. What do you think, Tyler? It might be for rent <laughs> if we can afford it. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, no, we 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 run a totally different like voltage level. Like we can't oh, even get right. to that, that. Oh yeah, point. you don't have 400 volts, do you? No, we run 144 nominal just because we, we didn't think we needed the power on the track, right? Plus, it's a little easier on the wallet, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, because we're, we're running 400 volts, you know, from the Tesla units. And, uh, you know, I mean, you, you, we were at um, our, our maximum power that we were actually delivering was 160 amps at 400 volts. So, wow, what's nice. that? That's 160 times? Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the math. Uh so let's do that. One's, yeah, what did you say? I could do it. I mean, so it's 84 amazing. kilowatt. That's what we were running direct into the battery. So what you said you have four packs total. So one's in the car on the track and the other three. What's the charging strategy for the other three when they're not in the car? 
Uh, we just have them topped off at 400, well, actually 396 volts or 398 volts is what we like to do because um, when you are when you hit the brake, when you initially get that sucker out there, that two volts, it'll actually peak out at like 406, 407 volts because of the regenerative braking. So you got to, the, the next iteration of the car will have a super capacitor bank uh, that will allow 30 seconds of just super capacitor power. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you'll have absolutely zero voltage lag whatsoever. There, it, it will, it will deliver full power all the way to 177 miles an hour. So you're kind of doing what people thought Tesla was going to do with Maxwell Technologies, huh? Yes, actually, I was involved in part of that because of the graphene. Wow, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. We were all surprised. Okay. I thought everybody was like, "Oh, yeah, they're going to do uh, capacitors." Oh no, no, I, I, I am definitely into that. That. Uh, that stage, I'm about to get the capacitors in for that. If if everything goes forward, uh, like I said, the charger and everything, you know, it, it, there's a diffuser rebuilding that. Oh yeah. So basically, 24 hour lemons is like a research and development, uh, fun way of uh, developing new tech. You can throw your, uh, you know, uh, oh, look, there's li little Nick. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, this is my son, Leonardo. Uh, hey, what's happening? Yeah, he's he's fantastic. That's um, great. You can see actually the wing. There's the carbon fiber wing from Pagani. And we painted it up to be like little lemons peel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. This is great. I'm really excited about all this. Amazing. Uh, what, so what else is left in the journey? And then I want to hear about your next race. Okay. So we, we got it all done. Okay. Son, go on, go on, go on, go on. Oh, he's going to pull on my hair. You see this? This is what happens when you have children. Uh, so well, we, we, we can let Tyler jump in. Any other, anybody else has questions about this? I'm just blown away. So if you're thinking of something you want to ask, you could just jump in. I bet you, we, we've got some great people on the, on the uh, line tonight uh rocky hernandez we got tyler we got kevin lieberman so anybody has questions you guys just jump in oh yeah i'm just wondering how we can get you to race with us at high plains or maybe we can go out east but <laughs> I would, i'm all great about to have... I, I do have my license yeah. my suit all my stuff uh and i am all about helping any team uh, i helped the one guy uh in seattle you know they have the the one coming up i could probably go to is in new jersey <laughs> when it comes to uh when it comes to uh uh the lemons i'll look up the uh the list yeah i'm all i'm all about any of that because I, I i'd love to help out or at least you know th th that's the point i mean i i know we, we want to race against you though oh you want to <laughs> see multiple cars on the track yeah um, like our goal is to like get as many EVs on the track as possible. That would like be we, fun. Yeah. That's even more fun. We are looking at possibly doing um, the, not not that one, the, the last one, uh, again, Road Atlanta, because we actually are all familiar with Road Atlanta. Um, so that, that might be what we do uh, in December, December 14th, which is the day after my birthday. So oh, happy, there you happy go. birthday to me. Um, our, we we ran in a uh, Nola, and and obviously we we did run it, and uh, we were running the fastest laps of the day. Period. Wow. Um, Randy Randy ran a two o four, which stood all day all day Saturday, and then finally on Sunday, a C ten with a six hundred cubic inch race motor in it. Okay, super cheap mobile. Finally beat us by one second and then a wow. a mercedes amg e55 uh called pretty girl they were awesome too also got us by one second um Amazing. and so that's how fast this car is i mean it is stupid fast um and we were we were doing very very okay but we were having issues because uh we did not plan properly um well, we did, but we didn't. So there's a lot of things in racing that you don't think about. And then also things have to come together. Like our generator didn't arrive till late, uh, late Friday. And we had done testing. So, and then NOLA has a thing where you got to get out, you know, at a certain time or you're staying all night. It's kind of like a, a lock-in, you know, 
Mm. And we couldn't do that because we had uh, a bunch of stuff and we were just totally wiped from the trip uh, and getting this thing all packed up. There's a lot of stuff. I recommend that if you're going there to do your testing on Friday, have your car already packed on Monday, <laughs> not mm. Wednesday. Uh, we thought we were doing awesome by packing it up on Wednesday and leaving Thursday morning, uh, like at four in the morning. No, 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 no. You definitely have that car ready to go and sitting, uh, on Thursday, you're already now rested, you, you know, from the trip. And yeah. So that kind of wiped us out. Uh, we also forgot, <laughs> I kid you not, somehow logistics happen and we forgot two of the packs to charge them up. Oh, so we had, we were on a back foot already on, on Sunday or Saturday. Um, so, but we were running very well. I mean, we were in the top, I, th I think we we're in the top three or top four for the first like three, four hours, um, or two hours or something like that. I, it, it, it there, there was the standings going on and we were doing very, very well. Uh, when I drove the car, I was taking it easy. And I knew for a fact that I was faster than everybody on the track. Like, wow. and that was me, not Randy. Randy was dominating, just destroying. And then Llewellyn went out there and drove and he ran real consistent, nice, smooth laps. Boom, boom, boom. Doing, doing fantastic. Um, and then I went out there and did uh, the same kind of speed as Llewellyn. And I was just like, wow, this is very easy to do. The car handled, I mean, it gripped like grim death. It was the cardboard aided design really, really, really worked out. Um, John but, uh, wants to know what place did you finish overall? Oh, like fortieth or something like that. We were way down there. We were we were way down there because and the, here's here's how we wrap it up uh, or wrap the our story up is uh, we were having issues and we were having a we were by uh, mid Saturday we started having technical issues coming up. Uh, because the batteries were not fully charged, what was happening was the generator was not meeting the requirements of the charger and they were not interfacing properly. Um, and we did not figure that out until late Saturday. So we were always, when we were originally charging, we were only charging at 24 amps and we had a 75 kilowatt generator. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Uh, I mean that, and that wasn't even our fastest lap. Our fastest lap was almost two minutes flat, like two oh four or something like it. Two oh wow. three, yeah. I mean we, I mean that's the standings. I mean we were murdering. Um, so we were doing all right, uh, but then it just the war of attrition of us just not being experienced. I mean we're a bunch of engineers, not race car people. Race car people know race cars. Uh, uh, and so that's where we were, we started learning very, very quickly. In fact, our only race car person is Daniel, who is laying half dead after the race there. Um, in the, he's in the Hawaiian shirt, the, the blue and yeah, there you go. Uh, cause we had, we made it a great time cause we did not, we were joking and saying we have a 70% chance of winning. And for a little while there, it actually looked like it. Like they're like, holy crap, you guys are really going to do this. But we knew internally, we're like, oh, sh oh, no, we don't have the batteries charged properly. We don't have this. The charger's not working properly. And it didn't work until late Saturday. It didn't work properly. So we were limping on batteries. We were, we were taking it easy after Randy ran the first, you know, run and we're, you know, we we're in, you know, the top three easily. Uh, then we we're like, um, yeah, we have no more batteries. They're all dead. They're all at like 360 volts. Which mm. at a 400, that doesn't sound like much, but your big prime power on those batteries is between 400 and 360 volts. After that, now you have, if you're conservative, you have about 25 minutes on the track. 20. Mm. And so, mm. you know, your meat and potatoes is on the on the on the high end, and then it, you know, it tails down pretty bad. Um, Which is the opposite end of the, the side that charges well. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, that thing uh, with the, the the cool part is uh, three ninety three was or I mean two ninety three was the the uh, prismatic cells. The Tesla batteries could go all the way down to like two seventy two, which was nice. We we're like, oh wow, we could get and we had done the testing on that and everything like that. But you know our ill preparedness of you know it, it's all our fault why we didn't you know smoke it and destroy everybody. 
uh, because I mean, that's just a fact. It's, we weren't race car drivers. We weren't race car people. We were engineers that were trying to present the solution. And that's why we're like, okay, we're pretty confident. We have a couple things done and a couple mindset things. We now have the car charger actually operating anytime we want. It works perfectly fine now. And now we're looking at uh, the next time we go, we're probably going to run a 150 kilowatt generator. Whoa. I'm not joking. Giant, a monster. I mean, it has to be pulled wow. in. Um, so we'll be able to charge faster than uh, the Gen 2 Tesla supercharger station. If, if that gives you an idea. So it'll be... It'll be, and we'll be able to do two batteries in tandem. That's kind of what we're looking at is two batteries in tandem to be able to charge them. And we'll have five batteries in queue. Uh, we're also wow. going to remove, it looks like we're going to remove the LDU. Um, and then we're going to redo some of the stuff. We're going to take the, because the cooling system works so well without the AC compressor. The AC compressor was supposed to come on that, that cooling plate comes on when the batteries hit 60 Celsius, right? They never went above 50. Like they, they actually hmm. never went above 41 was actually. the uh, number. So we were like, them. yeah. And then with the fact that we'll be using the super capacitor bank for the regen, you know, there'll be, it's all oh, out. Oh, oh, oh. So, so the be, capacitors will be on board the car. Yes. They will be inside the car. I can't wait to follow okay. this story. That's amazing. So, so uh, that helps with, does that help with keeping the inverter cooler? Yes. It helps okay. everything. Because okay. also you have clean power. It's it's 100% clean power and a, and just dead on. So you have no, the inverter is not trying to beg the batteries for voltage. Uh, and that's that's one of the things. It one takes of the, down the spikes, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, there's no spikes. It literally is just constant, beautiful power. Like it's clean as possible. Um, and then uh, we'll be changing it out. We'll take the LDU out uh, and we're putting a Model 3 whole rear end into the car because they had the same track as what our car currently has, uh, 62.3 inches or 62.5 inches. Um, and we can get the bolt pattern matched up for the wheel, the same wheels. But this is where we're also dabbling. We may put the front motor in. So it would be an all wheel drive RX-8 Oh, with the grip that it has. And we will then redo there. We actually can take, so you saw it had 3,200 and something pounds and we took another almost 60 pounds out of it. We know for a fact already that we can take another 400 pounds out of the car. Wow. With, with the dual motor setup. Oh my God. Wow. So we're, we are looking with all the things that we're doing and we're changing the battery swap system to a rack system that will literally, it pulls out like a, like a server rack, you know, a hot swap server. Oh yeah, server. there you go. It'll, it'll, and we're going to have individual modulated carts for it. Like, because they are smart. They, they went, we are going to do a proprietary cart, not a cart from Harbor Freight. <laughs> and uh, so you, you, we're going to use proprietary carts where they just slide out, boom, boom. And also they will go each side or, or agnostic to one side or the other, because we were having an issue with, uh, so the car empties out on the passenger side, the back batteries. And that was a very, very big issue for safety on pit row because oh, yeah, because you're out of coming down there. So now we're going to do it where it's coming out the other side and it just they slide out. We are also going to change how they sit instead of them in the back sitting like this. They're going to actually sit on top of each other vertically like this. Um, and the reason why we can do that is because there'll be a little there'll be about one inch space. But that'll also that's where I was saying, you know, you want to watch out about where your center of gravity is. Because when they were sitting up like that, it caused the car to dive a little bit. And it also caused mm. the car to have a lot of roll. Um, so we figured out, okay, we'll just lower that. And then we can also, because of how those server racks work, you can actually have them where they they uh, reticulate. So they go in and then down and then and lock into place. Oh, cool. So we're going to have it where those things are as low, 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 low as possible. So the highest one won't even be above the 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 center line of the axle so it'll be like a model three how it has that like go-kart feel where yeah. the, and and we're basically going to cut that back seat out of the car and redo all that so that it can do that um Amazing. and so that those are the plans if they come forward 
that's how we're going to do it. And that will do it right. And that would give us a, a, I would say a coin flip of whether or not, you know, or at least, at least three coin flips in close to actually winning the, the 50 K. Um, you know, a million nickels. We're not actually in it for winning the nickels. We're actually in it to win the race. So if someone else beats us to the nickels, more power to them. But we want to be able to win. And that's we were thinking if we did road Atlanta, then we would actually do the high plains drifter, the full 24, because then it would be then we'd have to have six batteries for swapping because of the you do a staging of it. And if you see how the charge versus discharge versus charge, you, you got to have those batteries rest as well. There's mm -hmm. there, you know, and keep them cool. Keep them, keep them doing their thing. Um, amazing. So that, this is that's, amazing. that's the future of it uh, for us. Uh, and mm -hmm. I would love to have it up and running. Um, and these guys will probably have a very, very good time. I think they're doing the high plains drifter themselves uh, in, in the, in the Datsun. Uh, and then also uh, the guy in Seattle with his Volvo station wagon, who's doing uh, a similar thing where he's doing the packs, he's building his own packs. Um, and he's asking if he could borrow our supercharger. And I'm like, if I can make it happen, I will, I, I'm open to that. Like letting the other EV crews, you know, borrow, our, you know, we'll have to figure out the interfacing and everything with that. But it's, I would like to help the community out and like make everybody get in on this and really like, Make it where in, in the next two years this happens. Yeah. If it's me or, or yeah, Nick. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> it, I mean, you gotta have that kind of you our most excited guest so far. This is this is great. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. I, I, I does anybody here have questions they want to jump in? Chris, well, Rocky, uh, Kevin, Tyler, go for it. Well, let's people rapid are thinking, fire and then let's wrap it up. While people are thinking about a question, um, speaking of nickels. Um, how are, what's your, I mean, without, if you're able to, to, to share with us, what's your main source of funding? And also in terms of helping the community, how can people watching this help you out with, uh, the nickels you need to have all those packs? So, uh, until we bought Tesla model, uh, model three drive, uh, batteries, this whole thing was funded out of my own pocket. I mean, it was just literally, I was just, you know, yeah, a little money here, a little money a there. It, it, I mean, it wasn't actually that expensive because some of the stuff like like when I got the Mercedes, that was for free. And so I sold all those parts off so that I could afford the drive unit. And so, I mean, because a Mercedes, that that Merc hood got me seven hundred dollars because it was perfect. So and it's a big aluminum hood. So, you know, I mean, yeah, boom, there you go. I got seven hundred dollars in eBay to, to get rid of that. Boom. And so the, the drive unit with the shafts, the guy I. That was the other thing. I was able to get the Model 3 batteries. This is, I, I cannot say enough good things about them. I was able to get them for like as low as $3,200 for a 52 kilowatt battery. It's, you know, yeah, you got to take it all apart and do all the things and get them all out and everything like that and do what you got to do. But $3,200 ain't bad for, for 52 kilowatts. Yeah. I mean, and you this can is actually so find. Cool. I, I mean, this is kind of like when, when, you know, when I tell my buddies and stuff that I'm doing EV stuff, this is what I imagine, you know, like the ultimate would be, sure, you could build a car, but can you take it racing? Can you push it to the limits? Uh, the other thing is production. That's what uh, Chris is thinking about doing. It's very difficult. Of course, you could do one conversion, but can you do it? Can you do it in an educational setting? And can you do it uh, like getting new people to 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 build an ev can you get it on a racetrack this is the challenging stuff can you get it on a racetrack and can you go into production these are like i feel like the three things that are like super hard to do uh well, you know and you need a community so i'm glad you're open to people helping you and stuff that's great man oh yeah i, I mean if like i i i can't say enough about like uh you know super fast matt was a lot of information on that you know you know his youtube uh, mm -hmm. There was a couple others, uh, you know, you, you go uh, Damien from um, uh, BM, EV BMW or whatever. Another, you know, you could get a lot of information. That's how kind of we figured out how to hack certain things and and then proprietor do our own cards or do our own things uh, because he was like, oh, yeah, you need to do this. And I mean, he's he's a fun character himself, but he, he also has provided a 
huge amount of information that you would never, I mean, I'm not an electrical engineer, so I would never have tackled this. I mean, I, I've dabbled in electronics and stuff like that throughout the years, um, you know, guitar amplifiers and things like that. But this is, this is something, this is another animal. So when you, when, I mean, to sit on what you're doing as like a secret, okay, this is not Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. I know those people. Sorry, this is not that level. Okay, this is this is a a electric car that you're probably going to go race and have fun. And if anything, you're going to have a whole lot of fun when you open the doors and open it all up at a car meet. And everybody, I mean, we every time we go to the cars and coffee, there's a thousand people around our car at any given time. Like, I mean, well, not a thousand, maybe a hundred though. I'm not joking. And we're sitting right next to the Ferraris because that's where they put us. And people just walk right by the Ferraris. They're beautiful, expensive, wonderful cars. And just go over and look at this thing and go, what in the hell is going on here? This is amazing. And you're like, yeah, that's that's what this is about. Uh, I'm awesome. sorry. And then also we got sponsors, uh, you know, HD Hyundai, uh, who makes the front end loader that we use to lift wind turbine blades. Uh, mm -hmm. And Taylor Heavy Equipment is associated with them. Obviously, Carbon Rivers, you can see it. Uh, and Yokohama helped us out. Bell Heavy Equipment, all these different people, they all helped us out, you know, and, and we're like, hey, here's here's a little cash to get those batteries across the finish line. Here's a little cash to make sure you do this. And here's or here's here's two sets of awesome tires. Blam. That's what Yokohama did. They sent it like nice. the next day. Like literally, it was so amazing. They were I mean, so, so I, let's get some questions that any for if anybody has any. Oh yeah, uh, just go for it right now. Otherwise, we're gonna wrap it up because this was really cool. And uh, uh, man, we're looking forward to the next thing with uh, with Nick. This is awesome. Yeah, we definitely need to have you on to talk about those uh, the wind blades. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll get we'll get in on that because uh, that was a that was a hilarious that has a story in its own, and I'll I'll save it for that. Nice. Nick, this has been amazing. I really appreciate you doing this. You were your most exciting guest we've had. And why not? You're doing, you're like breaking uh, ground here. And uh, this is going to be going forward. I think you're kind of plowing the course. People are going to be in your wake and uh, they're going to be surfing pretty good behind you. So that's awesome, man. Thank you I, for I doing all this awesome. hard work. And I know you're having fun, but I know there's moments where it's probably hard to do, but uh, it seems like you, you know, you, when you get in a groove, you know, you're probably thriving off the energy of going forward. So uh, good stuff, Nick. And yep. Ron, before we sign off here, we got a reminder, but if you're, if you made it this far in the episode, if you're watching this after tonight to make sure you like subscribe, so you don't miss the next episode where we talk with Nick and Arc Blast and everybody, we get updates from today. So hit that like button, hit the subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. All right. All right. So end the recording there. We could hang out for a little bit. That was awesome.